Here we have Kafru the Death Keeper coming out of the undead hordes, looking like a mummy that rose from his tomb. Uh, aesthetically, he looks like a decently cool champion. Um, interesting, a little bit different. And I've had the pleasure of using him on my free-to-play account, on the Baby Burrito account. With that being said, the gear that I have isn't going to be anywhere even close to mid-game. This is still very early game. And I want to go over his skills real quick and explain to you guys why I think he is a pretty decent champion. I don't think he's game breaking and I think the the ratings here are enough to substantiate that claim. He's a pretty mid champion. Early on I would say he's had some uses for me like he's definitely had some play for me in Spider. He had some play for me in Arena, a little bit in Clan Boss but nothing significant. His A1 has a chance to transfer a random debuff from himself to one enemy. His A2, which actually does hit decently hard, removes a random debuff from all allies and then increases damage by 5% for every debuff removed and then heals. Again, he's a defense-based champion. Then he's going to heal each ally by 10% of his own max HP if a debuff was removed from them. So we have some uh, debuff removals. We've got some healing. We've got some increase the damage. His A3 places unkillable and then also places a taunt. Really handy for something like uh, spider and arena which is you know basically where i've used him um because when you have a taunt that means that your enemies can't do anything except for attack kafru the death keeper they can use any skill that they want so if it's an aoe your and your allies are still going to get hit but it's all going to be focused on him they can't target anybody else decreases the damage all allies receive by 10 percent it's like a built-in uh, bulwark mastery or like a guardian set without the healing and then this champion receives that instead. Now he's definitely built out to be a support champion and I would say that he does support very well. He's not like a crazy champion but I could see him having some use for you especially like early on. He is in double speed and slayer. Don't pay too much attention to this because I, I wasn't really able to, to muster up anything with my current gear. But we can go ahead and take a look at all the pieces of gear that I have on him. I was basically prioritizing HP because the heals are based off of HP, defense, and resistance so that um, especially in something like arena he's not getting debuffed and he's not having his taunt or his unkillable buff removed. And then here we have some, uh, you know, whatever I could put together, that's what I put together. It was, it was a, it's a very broken build. I think regen might actually be a really nice uh, set to put him in. If you're a later game and you can do Doom Tower, then I would consider even doing Guardian and Immortal. Stack him with like high HP, high defense. Uh, put Guardian so that he has even more damage mitigation. 10% from the Guardian set on top of his passive, which is you know, makes it 20% plus the bulwark, which makes it 25%. So effectively, he's mitigating 25% damage on the entire team there. Then he heals himself by 10% for every turn that he takes. Immortal is going to give him another 3% on top of that. For context and comparison, if you were to set Death Keeper up like that, you would be on par with somebody like Duchess, who does ally damage mitigation by 25%, but only 15% from bosses. So he might even have a leg up there or like Pytheon, for an example, who does another 25%, except it's only per buff. Like you have to have X amount of buffs for this damage mitigation to cut in. But again, if you put Deathkeeper in a Guardian with his passive on top of the Bulwark Mastery, then it's just a flat 25%. And that would be a really nice build. Now, unfortunately, I don't have him on my main account, so I can't test this theory out, but I think it would be a fun one to do. Here are his total stats. I was focusing mostly on HP and defense. This is as good as it could get for now. 177 speed. You know, when it comes to his speed, I would say that because he does place unkillable on himself and he does place the taunt, you sort of, in my opinion, want him to go a little slow just to keep that buff uptime higher. That way the enemy can't do what they want to do. In spite of the longer those buffs stay up, the safer your entire team is going to stay. So, you know, I haven't really figured out a specific speed. If you guys have Kafru and you've used him, let me know how you guys have him built out. And then of course we have 232 res. As always, don't blindly copy masteries, but here, blindly copy these masteries. We have increased to res, increase the healing, decrease damage, uh, crit damage, shadow heal in case anybody else is trying to heal, you'll heal too. 
uh, remove a random debuff or a chance to increase res for all of the buffs that are placed on the allies by him delay death for some damage mitigation and then we have counterattack masteries to try to increase our chances of um, transferring said debuffs from his a1 and then bulwark so his passive in conjunction with bulwark provides a 15 percent uh damage mitigation for your entire squad in which he will receive that instead we have extra hp from the support side since i think he is a supportive champion his heal on his a2 with lay of hands increases to 15 percent as well if a debuff is removed remember there is that condition more heals and then more heals again with certain conditions as well as lasting gifts this will not increase unkillable or taunt keep that in mind but i wasn't really going to take spirit haste either so you know I, I took something just for the sake of taking something okay so allow me to take you guys into stage 13. so this team is 100 percent and we can do stage 14 sometimes with this team but it's not 100 percent so we're going to stick to 13. the way this works is kafru is going to start out using his a3 to place the unkillable so he can't die even if he's near death and the taunt ability so that whenever the spiderlings do take a turn they're going to focus on death keeper and not anybody else so he tanks everything just like they are like he's doing right now and the rest of the team is safe as long as that buff goes up ideally i think i would have him go a little bit slower to keep those buffs up longer now the taunt is not up cold heart is the one receiving some damage cold heart she's receiving the poison debuff in general as opposed to somebody like death keeper who has more resistance because he has resistance he is not taking any of that poison yeah so this is definitely one way uh you could go about doing it okay so let me go ahead and take you guys into arena so you guys can see what he can do for you in arena i'm gonna start off by placing taunt that way i mean rotos might actually pound through us um but we'll well you guys will see the taunt so Rotos could have one-shotted Nekmo or um, Sun Wukong, but because the taunt was up, Kafu received that attack instead. Put that on, and there it is. Again, Rotos is, uh, he definitely could have, you know, if he was built better, he could have uh, one-shotted through the unkillable, but you guys get the point with taunt. And then in the context of clan boss, whenever the clan boss tries to do his stun ability, you could time it so that anytime uh, he does try to do that move. He attacks Kafru and Kafru will tank that instead. So that's his first AoE and you saw all of that ally protection. So the rest of your team is able to stay alive a little bit longer than they normally would. Now the boss is about to do his A1. Oh, it's his A1. On his third turn, he's going to target one enemy and then try to stun them. But now that we have Taunt up and we've got Unkillable, Kafru is going to receive that. So right here, and boom, Kafu received the debuff. So I'm pretty sure you could come up with a unkillable comp, probably, because he does place that unkillable, so that is something, but, you know, I'm not an expert. So here we are at the end of the run. Kafu was one of the last ones standing. Uh, I think Nekma was able to stay alive just because of the, the leech, and he's just taking so many turns, but yeah. So, like, we're on hard. This is not, like, an awesome team. Of course, we don't even have, like, awesome gear, and a lot of these guys aren't maxed out. 